I think it was mainly at that time, it was the Jack Bruce band. How long were, were you with Jack and, and why did you end up parting company with Jack when you did? Two years, but he got dropped from his record company. So it was the writing was on the wall. Sadly, that was kind of the end of the project. Um, and then all of a sudden, Jeff Beck. Just Jeff to, Beck, the way you say it. <laughs> yeah, it was Max Middleton, uh, who I'd done many sessions with. Jeff was looking for a new band and we went down to Jeff's house and we just jammed for a bit. And um, Jeff didn't quite get on with John, uh, but he uh, was fine with me. And all of a sudden I was getting calls to record with Jeff, uh, asking him, uh, uh, asking me, where should we record? Who can you recommend an engineer? Mainly because, you know, I was in the, I was in studios, you know? Uh, and so I knew all the studios, which would be the suitable place to record and, I chose Ramport. To me, it was the most rock and roll studio at the time. Um, and um, Jan Hammer came over. And it was the first time I met Jan. Of course, I'm a huge Mahavishnu Orchestra fan. And I was like, wow, you know, this is amazing. And it was just Jeff, Jan, and myself, no bass player. Wow. Jan played Moo bass, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and we started recording uh, the songs for There and Back. And then I got a call. Would you uh, come down and rehearse? This is Jeff's manager, Ernest Chapman. He's ex-military tank commander, you know, <laughs> and he, he dealt with everything very military-like, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hello, dear boy, yes. Would you uh, come down to Jeff's house and uh, 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 come and play with Stanley Clark? Uh, uh, the Stanley Clark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so now I'm driving down to, you know, East Sussex and uh, I get there and, meet Jeff and meet Stanley. It's like, wow, you know? And then all of a sudden we're, we're off to Japan to do a tour. And um, yeah, uh, that, that was, that's kind of how that came about. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> every, every story you tell is incredible. In terms of Jeff, then obviously we, we sadly lost him earlier this year, at the start of this year, in fact. Um, yeah. Everyone always speaks yeah. so highly of his, his talent with the guitar and he's one of the greatest we've seen. I mean, you've obviously worked with some incredible guitarists. I mean, where do you rank him in terms of, of rock guitarists? Yeah, I mean, I, I really have been lucky to work with you know, some of the best guitarists in, yeah. in, the, in the world. Well, all I can say is their heroes are, are Jeff. Their hero was always Jeff. That's the thing, you know, no matter how good they were, and they were fantastic, you know, with our fantastic Joe Satriani, Steve Lukather. But you talked about Jeff and they go, well, you know, and I, I understand why. I worked very closely with Jeff for two years. In 1981, after there and back, we were working on a project and it was just the two of us. And I was just, you know, I just started writing music. So I was, really trying to compose music with Jeff. Um, and um, we were trying all sorts of bass players out. Um, but back then, Jeff, Jeff was, he was very difficult to get out on the road. He, he, he was, you know, we would only tour two weeks, three weekends. That's all he would want to do. He just lost patience with it. Um, so he just wanted to get home. Um, I hear in later years, he was much more enthusiastic about touring and did a lot more. Um, but back then, it was kind of tough, you know. Um, so we worked very closely. And, you know, I used to be down at his house quite often. And we'd be watching TV in the, in the living room. And he'd have his guitar. And a lot of this stuff that he started playing later, he was already experimenting with you could just hear it just the sound of the strings you know it wasn't plugged in or anything he's just watching the news or watching a documentary and and he's going he's trying all this stuff and you know he had a very unorthodox way of playing you know a lot of thumb over the top of the neck and he hardly he never used a pick i remember him when he's kind of stopped using a pick it was just fingers you know and um yeah it was really quite amazing and I, I remember in his music room, he had loads of guitars just resting up against the, the sofa. And he was big into cars. And, and often uh, his fingernails were full of oil. And if you shook hands with him, I mean, he used to wipe his hands on his T-shirt first, then shake hands. And then I used to pick up these guitars and 
you'd have to wash your hands afterwards because in the frets there was ingrained oil, motor oil, you know. Um, and uh, he had a whole bunch of uh, Ibanez guitars. They were trying to, and they were beautiful. I mean, I'm not a guitar player, but I was trying to kind of get, and I said, Jeff, why don't you use these guitars? And he'd say, ah, oh, they're too easy to play. I like a hard guitar to play. <laughs> <laughs> he was frightened that if he, if he got used to playing guitar that was too easy to play, he'd lose his technique. So he always, he liked to fight the guitar. He always, you know, isn't that amazing? Yeah. So, it is. Uh, yeah, we worked, very closely with, with with each other for a while um and it, it, the the project didn't take off um we tried various things but yeah it, it didn't really work we did even recorded some some stuff uh with bob ezrin as a producer but yeah it kind of it was a bit stillborn and then mick jagger came into the uh fray um so anyway yeah <laughs>